What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kev Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, good morning. Good to see you. Great, Chief. On? How are you? I'm doing good. Listen, I'm tired of this rain here in Dallas. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it is horrible. So I know uh, this is a, a PSA for Mother Nature. They say April showers bring May flowers, but it's June, okay? So we, <laughs> we get it. We get it. So uh, speaking of Dallas, we have a Dallas icon that's a world renowned for his passionate involvement courtside and savvy business acumen in the boardroom. So without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. I'm so excited to have today's guest with us. He is an entrepreneur, television personality, a media proprietor, and the owner of your Dallas Mavericks. Please help me give a big chief chat welcome to Mark Cuban. Hey, everybody. Mark, Mark, Mark. <laughs> Mark, thanks for joining us. Know you're you've been super busy, but we appreciate your time and sure. everybody watching. Drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your love with Mark there. Any questions you have for him, we'll be reading those live throughout the broadcast. And if you're not following our page, you should because Chief Chats are every week. We have great military exclusive guests lined up for you. And following us helps you get notifications when we go live. Awesome. So Mark, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. You got it, Chief. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So you know what? I'm not going to lie. I was a little, little worried uh, because... I was, I was, so I'm not a Mavericks fan, but I, I do, I do like the Mavericks. And so I was hoping that they would de definitely win the series. Cause I was like, I need Mark to be on, on his, you know, his hey, you. So, Mood, right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, he, he's going to come in uh, feeling some type of way because of, uh, you know, but that was an awesome series. It was. Like, you guys uh, took it, took it down to the wire and uh, it was, it was amazing to watch and, uh, you guys got you guys got a team. You got a squad, man. Yeah, we got a squad, man. I'm excited. I mean, yeah. If you would have got me yesterday, I was I was beside myself. I was not <laughs> a camper. Um, it it would have been a lot of one word answers. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit um, calmed down now. But yeah, it was it was a fun fun exciting series. Unfortunately, the bad guys won. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, can you tell our, our viewers where you joined us from today? Yeah, I'm in Dallas. Um, I'm in my office, obviously. Um, Chasing the rain away, trying to chase the rain away. It's, it's the weather's been miserable, but yeah, I'm here at home. Awesome. And we are also headquartered in Dallas. So when Chief was talking about the rain, you know exactly what we're talking about. Um, we're so happy again that you made time for us. And man, it has been a rough 15 months for the world of sports. Uh, but looks like we're coming out on the other side of it. You had a lot of fans at the arena yep. during the most recent series. How difficult was it to finish uh, the 2020 series when you guys were in the bubble um, to ensure that everyone stayed healthy and then to start off this season um, and, and finish it. How can you kind of walk us through that and what that was like for you? Yeah. I mean, like for everybody, I mean, it's been stressful um, there when you've got, you know, a, an industry where people are in close contact continuously and it's physical and there's physical contact, people are concerned, you know, you know and there was so much uncertainty in, in terms of the virus and how to deal with it. So, you know, the, the we actually stopped playing March 11th, 2020 during a Mavs game. And it, it, you know, there was complete uncertainty then and the NBA put together a great program where we went down to Orlando and, and played in a bubble environment and kept everybody safe. And then we had a quick turnaround and started the 2021 season. And it, you know, like for everybody, it's been a grind. I mean, today was the first day I didn't have to get up and get tested. Um, you know, <laughs> wow. And literally, we were getting tested not just every day, but sometimes twice and three times a day, um, depending on the travel schedule and the circumstances. And so it's, you know, it's tough. I mean, you get into a city for a game and then you have to get up um, super early, even though you got there at three, you got to test by nine or eight, depending on where you're at. And, and so, you know, it, it was aggravating and it, it was difficult, but it was worth it. You know, this is this is the game we love. This is the job we love. But in order to keep people safe, you, you know, like you guys know, you've got to do what you got to do. 
Absolutely. And so take us back to that day, March 11, 2020. You were in the middle of a Mavs game um, and you were told that the NBA was immediately suspending the season because of the growing COVID threat. So um, that moment was caught on video and it went viral. But what was that <laughs> yeah. like for you? That yeah, moment? you never want to be a meme where you look like you just got, you know, shot. Someone hit you between the eyes with an egg, a rotten egg, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was crazy because. I remember in the locker room, um, we had talked, I talked with the players and they were asking questions about the uncertainty and what was going to go on. And, you know, Luka Doncic, um, our best player asked me, you know, do you think the season might get canceled? I'm like five or 10%. I don't think so. Um, and then, you know, and I'm like, look, you know, the wisdom of the crowd, we'll go out there. Um, and if we've got a full house, that's probably a good sign because it means everybody thinks it's okay. We walk out into the court full house. It's like there's nothing going on. And then come the third quarter of the game, I got the text that the season was being suspended and everybody saw my reaction and my jaw drop. I'm done. Um, but, you know, it, it, the, mid, the minute I got it, it was like, well, the NBA is not stupid, right? They know what they're doing and it must really be serious. And your mind immediately turns to all these other things, your family and what comes next and, you know, the people you work with and their safety and their protection. And, you know, that that's, you know, as much as I was trying to keep an eye on the basketball game, that's where my mind was churning towards. Yeah, I can remember that day very fondly too, because I was uh, stationed at, in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, which uh, they have an open sports book there, <laughs> so, so so I think I think I had the Mavs on my on my parlay ticket that day. And so, yeah, well, we got you got you a dub you then, right? Yeah, you did. <laughs> so th appreciate that. But yeah, after, after that, I was like, man, where are the sports going? And so I had to resort to betting on Korean baseball for for like. You, you know, I don't know if you want to say that out loud, Chief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I'm just. Uh, it, it's legal in Mississippi, but I'll just be in full transparent. I yeah, I know. You got you to keep the juice going. I know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, Mark, you've always been a huge supporter of the nation's military, and you established the Fallen Patriot Fund. Yep. So can you tell us a little bit about the foundation and what inspired you to do it? Yeah. Back in 2003, um, at the start of Operation Iraqi Freedom, um, obviously there was a lot of uncertainty about what was going to happen. We were going to war. Um, you know, that's never a positive, you know, generally. And, and so I wanted to show my support for the military. My dad was Navy. My uncle was Air Force. Um, and so, you know, just trying to, to help where I could, because, you know, there were going to be some, you know, some of our brave um, service um, people who that weren't coming back or that were going to be injured. And so we, we started up, uh, we started the, the Fallen Patriot Fund and we just, created this fund where any the family of any service member who was injured or killed in Operation Iraqi Freedom could apply for financial help. Um, because I know as much as the, we try to take care of you guys, it's not always enough. And there's, there's always unique circumstances for each family, particularly when somebody, you know, can't work anymore or, or is disabled or has other issues that need to be addressed or, God forbid, doesn't come home. And so, you know, we've raised, you know, millions of dollars. I think we're, we're past five million or shouldn't even say raised because I, I funded most of it myself. But we, we distributed over five million dollars um, and continued to provide support. And this last 18 months ago, I guess we kind of evolved since Operation Iraqi Freedom kind of um, came somewhat to an end. Um, we extended it so that um, it also um, supported first responders um, and police officers. So. You know, if, if someone is tragically in, or if an officer or first responder is tragically injured or hurt, um, then we try to be there to support them. Well, that, that's awesome. I didn't know your uh, your dad and your uh, your dad and your uncle were were uh, service members as well. So thank them for their service. Yeah, of course, you, you, so your dad was an airman. So that's you know, that's even better with me. So <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, my uncle, my uncle flew jets. Oh, yep. awesome, awesome. And then your dad, you said, was Navy. Navy. So were was he in the Navy when you were growing up? Did you grow up around um, no, the no, military he style? Up, he, he, he served in World War II um, and the Korean War, um, and then for a little bit afterwards, but and then he got out. Okay. Well, we sure do appreciate your, your family service. And, um, you know, one other thing that you 
do for the military to show your support is you have the seats for soldiers at the Mavericks game uh, where season yep. ticket holders can donate their courtside seats. So tell us about that and oh, why awesome. those games are so special. Yeah, I love that you asked me about that. Um, so for the past 17, 17 years, I think it's been um, one game a year. Uh, this year, we, it was an exception for obvious reasons, but one game a year, um, all the front row season ticket holders give up their seats to um, injured service people. And we fly them in from Andrews or wherever, um, different bases um, around the region and bring them here and we take them out to dinner. We American Airlines donates a couple jets. We bring them into Dallas. We awesome. take them out to dinner. Um, we show them a good time. Then we bring them to a Mavs game and, you know, they're yucking it up and yelling and drinking and having a good time in the front row. <laughs> And then after the game, the players from both teams all come out and sign autographs and take pictures, and we do a big group picture. Um, it, it's just, it's amazing. And obviously during the game, as much as everybody watches the, the players on the court, all eyes are on the service people as well. And, you know, the there's no longer standing ovation than um, what happens when the crowd stands and honors all of our all of our service people around the world. Um, it's a good five to 10 minute ovation and it, it's incredible. And just the, the energy and the excitement that you can feel in the arena and the love is it, phenomenal. So we'll, we've been doing it for 17 years. We'll do it again, um, hopefully next this coming season, but it, it's so special to be part of and it, it's just exciting. And, you know, it, I, I'm proud to be part of it. I, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it, you know, just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I can just imagine, cause I, I know, you know, I've been in, I've been in uh, a, a lot of, you know, sports arenas and man, it gets electric in there just yeah. uh, so I could just imagine. It's uh, incredible chief. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, you, and you can just see the smile on everybody's faces because they become the stars, right? Yeah. They're on the court and everybody appreciates what they do for our country and the fact that we don't get a chance to play these games if you guys don't do what you do and and so the the love is just incredible and just the guys you just see you know and the, and the women that are there you just see their faces light up it's oh, it's yeah. a special experience awesome awesome so march you have a, a ton of irons in the fire uh when it when it comes to like taking on um business and endeavors and so uh what where does that drive come from to keep pushing and adding more to your plate I'm competitive. To me, business is the ultimate sport. And, you know, in basketball, our season just ended and we have time. The guys have time to kind of refresh and regroup. Um, you can make trades, you draft players, you do all kinds of things. In business, it's 24 seven by 365 and the game is always on. And to me, that I love that juice. I love that excitement. I love that rush. And it's, it's most people aren't up for that game. You know, it, it takes a lot. It's, it's not like, okay, you know, I'm going to I'm going to do my thing from nine to five and, you know, help my companies that I invest in and no big deal. You know, I'm competitive. There's you know, I used to be the youngest. I'm not the youngest anymore. And so now I get all these young cats, you know, trying to come out and kick my ass. And I'm like, come on, bring it. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they coming for you. <laughs> yeah, they're coming for me. Right. And if I'm going to compete with them, then I've got to be on my game and I've got to be good at what I do. And, and that drives me and it drives me to always learn. Because to me, you know, there's a couple key skills that um, you always need to be successful in business. And the, the most important one is the desire to always be learning because business just continuously changes. You guys know from APHIS and, and the work that you do, it's not the same now as it was 10 years ago or 20 yeah. years ago. It evolves. And you guys are slow, <laughs> you guys yeah, yeah. Are slow <laughs> relative to the rest of the world. We are. And, you yes. know, for reasons. <laughs> and, and so... You know, just that that speed of change and, and to me is exciting, and and that that's the juice that keeps me going. Yeah, even even the pandemic shifted customer, you know, uh, on how they do business, and and now it's more of a convenience thing because we couldn't get out in the stores, and so having to turn on a dime like that is, yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. You know, we had, you know, if you go to markcuban.com, you can see all the companies I'm an investor in. There's hundreds of them. And, you know, a lot of them were struggling because they had a big retail presence and we had to really amplify their online presence. And that, you know, and not only did more people buy it, um, online, but now they continue, more people continue to buy online. And so um, 
you know, you've got to be adaptive and you've got to be agile in order to be successful. That's excellent words of wisdom, especially coming off the last year. Um, and along those same lines, so give us a little secret. What do you see <laughs> is the next big thing in business or technology? What, what can we tap into? Um, there's a bunch of things. Um, you know, it's always changing. Artificial intelligence is obviously huge. And if you look at the, the military budgets right now, that's a big key um, at all levels. And, you know, when people talk about AI, they, they want to talk about battles and war, you know, war, you know what happens in war. And um, that's the way I look at it. But the reality is the greatest impact for AI um, in, in business and I think also particularly in logistics is going to come from optimization, being able to do things, you know, using artificial intelligence to find better ways to optimize, you know, the logistics of the military, the logistics of business. And I think that's a core competency that we as a country really need to, to make a priority um, because obviously the nations we compete with, they're not sitting still. And, and so I think artificial intelligence is critically important um, to business, small and large and the military. Um, I'm also a fan of cryptocurrencies. I think um, smart contracts mm -hmm. on, on blockchains is a unique opportunity that is going to make business processes a, 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 lot, um, a lot more efficient and the ability to, to interact with um, consumers and customers a, a lot better. So there, there's a lot of things. And then you'll see, you know, particularly with the AI, again, you'll see that um, extending into medicine. Medicine will be more personalized. Um, as processors and GPUs get a lot more um, efficient and faster, you know, our bodies are just one big math equation, just, you know, an, yeah. an indeterminable number of variables. And the more of those variables we figure out, the more problems we can solve, the more illnesses we can cure. And so personalized medicine, AI across all applications, um, military, um, battlefield everywhere, logistics. And I think, you know, I'm really coming around on cryptocurrencies and particular smart contracts and their implications. Is that, is that NFTs? Is that what? Is yeah, that's just one application. So NFTs are fun, you know, digital collectibles are cool. You know, you, you know, I collected baseball cards and comic books as a kid and, you know, now everything's on your phone and, and you know, anything digital can be, can become an NFT. And once it becomes an NFT, it's a lot easier to trade online than it is to go on eBay or to go to a card store or whatever it is. And so, you know, that's, that's one application for it. Um, there's, there's so many other supply chain management, you know, what's the provenance, what's, you know, where has this item been and to make sure, you know, cause so many things that you guys deal with, um, not so much at the retail level, but in the logistics side of things where you've got to make sure that a part gets from point A to point B or the manufacturing process is perfect. And so, you know, smart contracts allow you and, and other ways of doing that tagging allow you to track to track exactly where something's been in a supply chain and putting that on the blockchain that and even in the military, a private blockchain where people with secure access can get in there to say, OK, you know, this is a piece for, for this plane. Let me make sure this part has been tracked and and modified and dealt with correctly. Um, and it's all stored on the blockchain. And in the past, we, we would have done that with databases and, and we still can do it with regular databases, but it's just a little bit more efficient, um, particularly with private blockchains. And so I think that's gonna have a big impact. But NFTs are just a fun way yeah. of learning how to use yeah. those. Yeah, and cri crypto, I, I'm hearing that you, you're accepting it. Uh, at, yeah, math game, yeah. Yeah, math game, so. <laughs> Yeah, and it's great. You know, Dogecoin, you got some Dogecoin, go to Mavs.com. Feel free to buy all the Mavs gear you want. <laughs> you want to sell. However people want to buy, that's how we want to sell. Absolutely. Do you take cash? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have. Just cash. Absolutely. Use cash, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. But, um, you know, it's funny because uh, a little secret, like I'm one of these people that collects all their change. And so literally I've had – you know those big water th cooler things where you turn them upside down the water, yeah. the water and everything. Yeah. yeah. So I've had one of those for 30 years that I've been filling with my pennies, nickels, and dimes and quarters. And so it weighs like 80 pounds now. <laughs> the reason I bring that up is it used to be every day I'd come home and I'd take you know whatever I had to change and put it. Now I don't have change anymore. It's getting lonely, you know, because yeah. we, we hardly use cash anymore. No, that that's true because. I've had a hundred dollars in my wallet for like the past two months and I've yet to spend it. Like it's crazy. I've been 
swiping my card and I forget that I even got cash. We can help you with that, Chief. We can help you with that. Yeah, you know why you had that hundred dollars? You haven't been to that sports book lately. That, that's true. That's true. That's true. Korean baseball is not on your radar right now, huh? Te- so. Texas, Texas, open up your sports book immediately. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> Uh, Great, great stuff. So Mark, just want to pause for a second and share the feedback from Facebook. Sandy says, we love the Mavericks. And then we have Mickey and Brandon saying MFFL. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Chief, I think this comment is for you. Mark Mark Jenkins, he said, oh, that's my twin KO with my brother Mark to the moon. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. To, <laughs> to the, the moon. moon. <laughs> <laughs> Dose to the moon. <laughs> to the moon. And then Brandon is asking, um, what areas of opportunities will the team be looking to address during the off season to improve, um, take the team to the next level? Any trades, free agency, draft, anything that you yeah. can share about we're, that? We're going to look for um, a primary ball handler who can score. I mean, we want, you know, Luca. we had the ball in his hand so much, we need to be able to give him a break. KP is not really a, a primary ball handler. He's a scorer. Um, and so you need guys who can create open looks for KP and Luca, so they don't have to try to do as much. And for Timmy Hardaway, who really came up big for us. So we're going to try to add a primary scorer that can take the pressure off of KP and Luca. Excellent. Uh, also, Chief Reyes is tuning in. So he says, what's up? Um, and then Mark Mark says, cash is so 2012. <laughs> <laughs> little vintage, just like cash. That's, a, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, I'll take it. Don't get me wrong, you know. <laughs> I'll even take checks. I'm good. I'm good. I still have a checkbook, check and we, we pay bills that way. Yeah, I'm a little uh-huh. embarrassed. Probably should have admit that. Are you, you still balancing, you. balancing your checkbook, Julie? No, my husband does that. Yeah, he, he does that. He's better with the numbers than I am. I'm good at spending the money. So, um, and then from Chief's oh, page, I just want to. <laughs> from Chief's page, I just want to share that Markeisha is tuning in from Georgia, and Gabriella um, says thank you so much for supporting our service members. And um, Gabriella is a proud veteran watching from Arizona. Well, thank you for your service, Gabriella and Julie. Lovely. So, so as you know, we got a very, very captive audience. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we got we got uh, soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, guardians, Coast Guard members, and military families watching for all, from all over the world. Do you have any words of encouragement or to share with the, our heroes? Yeah, I mean, first, thank you for your service. I mean, if you ever watch me stand for the national anthem um, with my hand over my heart, I always say a little prayer, and, and it always before every game or anytime I hear the anthem. And it always starts with thank you to all those who are fighting now and fought before for keeping this world safe so we can do what we do. So thank you for all you guys do because we don't get to play this game we love and the people don't get to enjoy it unless you do what you do. And I recognize that, you know, life, you know, particularly in military, becomes more and more complicated every day. There, there's no simplification anymore. You know, we talk about all these technologies. It, 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 it's disruptive and it, you know, the military is having to become more and more agile as all these things change. And so I know, I know sometimes the jobs you have to do aren't the jobs you signed up for and the jobs you signed up for may not exist, you know, the way they used to in the past. So, you know, the fact that you guys are able to be, you know, so, so agile and tactile and strategic and do all these things, you know, it, it, we all feel it, we all know it. And if you ever doubt that whether or not you're appreciated, know that I appreciate you, my family appreciates you and that this country appreciates you. Yeah, and we appreciate you too, Mark, because um, I do remember a few years ago, uh, you did something with the Air Force, uh, I think Spark, Spark Tank? Spark, yeah, a couple of years ago, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 you, and I think somebody got up there and told you how, how slow our uh, acquisition process <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we appreciate you taking your time to just come out and, and just kind of evaluate our, our process and, and and give us some pointers and, of course. and try to inspire some other people. Because I know there's some people that are in the military right now that uh, it may not be a career for them and they want to get out and and maybe, uh, you know, dive into some entrepreneur. Yeah, and even inside the military, like when I, when I did um, Sparks, um, there's some great entrepreneurial minds in the military. And, you know, sometimes it's tough. There's a lot of doors you have to try to, 
bang your head against for a long time before that door <laughs> opens. Yeah. But it, it's great that that there are so many innovators inside the, the military, so many entrepreneurs, um, because that's how change starts. So if you have those great ideas, don't get frustrated. We all get frustrated inside or outside the military. Look, if here's what I tell my kids and I tell myself this as well. Wherever you are right now, look around and other than things that are organic, trees, dirt, somebody created it. So one day that light, that TV, that desk, whatever design, whatever it may be, one day it didn't exist and somebody had that idea. And there are so many ideas that turn into reality. All you got to do is look around every day and everything, you know, that wasn't here in this God given earth that was created. Somebody had that idea first. And you just have to ask yourself, why not me? Why can't it be my idea that changes the military or makes it more efficient or just maybe won't be earth shattering, but you can look back and say, you know what? The military used to do it this way, but now they do it my way because of my idea. And those little changes, those little um, enhancements, those ideas may not seem big to some people, but just the pride of knowing that you changed something that changed the game. I've always loved doing that. There's little things that I can point at and companies I've started that maybe nobody ever heard of, but I get to say, everybody does this, this company did that. And so when, when you have that idea and you're not quite sure and you're frustrated, and you don't know where to go and people keep on closing that door, not responding to your emails, just keep on asking yourself, why not me? Because all it takes is one. Never matters how many times you fail. I, you, you don't even know how many times I fail. Right? <laughs> I'm really good at failure. But at the same time, remember the successes, and that's all that matters. Yeah, I heard you, I heard you try to sell powdered milk at, at some point in, in your life. But after college, I'm like, look, it's cheaper. No one likes to spend all that money on milk. So what if it doesn't taste quite as good? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I had no idea. Um, so speaking of innovating and, you know, not taking no for an answer and trying new things, let's talk about Shark Tank and a little bit about your role as an investor on that show. So what do you base your investment decisions on and what has been the most successful for you? You mean Shark Tank, that show on ABC on Friday night, 8 p.m. Um, Eastern time, 7 p.m. That Shark Tank? I think that would it. be the show. Yes, sir. <laughs> I just want to remind people, you know, Friday night's on ABC, also on Hulu. Feel free all on CNBC. But anyways, um, you know, when I went on the show, it's been the season We're we're getting ready to shoot season 13. And I've been on 12 years. Excuse me. When I went on the first time as a guest shark, um, the second season, the show really hadn't connected yet, and it was bouncing around from, from night to night. Like, if you remember the show Desperate Housewives, like if Desperate Housewives yeah. on Sunday night, they, they stuff in Shark Tank as a filler. And I went on there thinking, you know what? They're, they have me for three episodes as a guest shark. This show, a business show is never going to last, right? It shows how much I know. I, I'm just going to go on to have fun and raise hell. And I did and did some of my worst deals. But, you know, now, 12 years later, um, what I look for is – an entrepreneur who loves to learn, who loves their product so much, they think it's the, the, the best thing they can do is sell it to everybody because that's how valuable they think it is. Um, and a product or service that makes me think, why didn't I think of that? Or, oh my goodness, this I would love this product. I'd love to use it. Or if it's food, I'd love to eat it. And so I look for things that I think are going to be really valuable to me and an entrepreneur who I think is a learner, a salesperson, and, and has got that edge that makes them want to really commit. Excellent. Thanks for sharing that. And so, Mark, what's ahead for you? Any upcoming projects that you'd like to share? Um, what's ahead for me? I'm just getting started, right? I haven't done my best work yet. So I'm, I look at myself like I'm, I'm just a rookie every year. Every, every year, I'm just a, a newbie getting started again. And so I, you know, the way I look at things, Steve Jobs has this line um, or had this line that always stuck with me. He said, everything's a remix. And if you go back mm -hmm. to the early days of Apple, they really were remixes of products from companies that, you know, like Xerox and, and Bell Labs and all these other things. It wasn't, you know, start from scratch original. And so my attitude is if I'm always learning and really find areas that are interesting to me, like right now, crypto, you know, learning what a smart contract is, learning how to make NFTs, learning how, you know, blockchains really work, learning the, the dynamics of that. And then I ask myself, okay, now that I understand this, 
How can I apply it to business? What are things that I do that can be done better with um, crypto um, or with artificial intelligence? And, and then I try to start companies or invest in companies that do those things. You know, I, I'll give you a simple example with, with NFTs, um, non-fungible tokens on, on typically Ethereum blockchain, you know, you can create all these digital collectibles, but I think we're gonna, we're gonna get to a point where it may be like um, military handbooks or hand, you know, general handbooks. Well, let's not use military, let's just say um, textbooks in college. Right. Textbooks in college are the most inefficient product. Ever. Yes. Right. You buy them. You go to a bookstore. You got to pick them up. Everybody knows, you know, you can get a digital version of a book. Right. You know, all you got to do is go on Amazon and, you know, there's everything's available for download. Yet here we are, you know, kids in college, they got to buy the book and then to save money, they want to buy it used. So they go to the used bookstore where they go to a website that's used. And then after their, their class is over, they sell those things all marked up and everything and people buy them because those are free notes, right? Exactly. Well, if you made a textbook in NFT, it, then all of a sudden, you know, you can download, you can print it out if you want. And A, it's going to be cheaper, but it's going to be so much easier to sell when you're done because it's just a digital file and it's really easy to create a digital marketplace of, of any NFTs. We see them with collectibles, but you can also use them for books. You can use them for music. We're going to use them for Mavs tickets. And so trying to look at new technologies and apply, apply them and say, you know, can I do this better using this new technology? And you'll see, you know, if any people try to go to a Mavs game, hopefully all of you do it when you oh, come yeah. to Dallas or on the road. Um, hopefully by the start of next season, if we can get it done, our tickets will be NFTs. And what makes that really cool is you'll be able to, you know, you'll use it to get in, you'll use it to get to your seat. Well, because you have this as an NFT, will give you artwork and videos that connect to it. So after, after the game is over, you now have a collectible. So let's just say Luca goes off for 50 points and we beat the Clippers in a game seven next year. And now <laughs> you have this NFT that you can either keep as a collectible that proves you were there, or you can resell it if you want. And because, because it's a digital NFT, it's really easy to sell on online marketplaces. Whether it's, so whether it's a textbook or a ticket, you know, applying these new technologies to applications of, of things that we're doing now. And again, the same thing works within the military. Um, that's what I like to do. That's what's next for me. And, and hopefully I can disrupt a few industries because I love to, to mess things up. Right. If there's a <laughs> that, that's been doing it the same way forever. To me, that's just a ripe target. So you guys are a target ripe environment, you know, in, in the military. So and I, and I know it, it's not easy to create change in the military. But, you know, it's for your country. Find ways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, well let, let us live, Mark. Don't, don't disrupt us too much, man. We'll, uh, no, we'll, you know what? No, no, I'm just, I you know, there's always, for smart people that care and love their job, there's always a spot. No, you know, no. the jobs, jobs may evolve, but a lot of these technologies will create more jobs because as much as things, you know, it's like, you know, this, my dad had this saying, you don't live in the world you were born into. And if you think back to the year you were born and the technology around back then and how people worked, um, it's night and day difference. You know, my, my youngest is 11 and even what's changed in his lifetime is dramatic. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, people, we're always going to need people who love what they do and who love to learn. And, you know, and I think these new technologies, while they might change jobs, they'll create more jobs. You have such great advice, and I'm really excited about the possibility of going to a game next season with an NFT. I didn't even know what an NFT was until like two months ago, so now I'm like, man, yeah, no, that no. could be me next season, walking in with Absolutely. an NFT. That's like really exciting to me. Leaving your cash at home. <laughs> Leaving my cash at home. Yes, that's, I don't know, That's that blows my mind. Um, so you already mentioned Shark Tank ABC Friday nights. Where else can we find you, um, either online or on social media? So that sure. we can All my social you. media handles are M Cuban. So you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Instagram. And you can even find me on TikTok because Renegade. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do it with my kids. It's great, man. I have so much fun. My daughters get me dancing. My son's into cooking videos. And so we did, we, we have some fun desserts that, 
you know, on TikTok, you could do these duets, right? Where there's other accounts and then you could kind of copy them. And so he finds the cool desserts that he gets me to make and we record them and do them as duets. My, our last one was this really, uh, it was amazing, where he, he took an apple slicer and then we dipped it in marshmallow and then we put it in honey. Oh, oh and man. it got 18 million views. It was crazy. <laughs> oh, wow. If you want wow. to check out M Cuban on TikTok. Yeah, that sounds like something I'm going to have to do when we're, we're, we're done chatting. <laughs> that sounds like a good, that sounds it's awesome. Oh, so good, Julie. So good. Yeah, the and base, of that, the base of that seems that really healthy. healthy. So I, I can I can go from the base of that that dessert. I don't know about the rest of it, but it, you know. Yeah, the apple was good, man. I tried to be, I tried to be healthy. And so I was like, all right, Jake, this is yours. I'll take just like one little piece. And, you, you know, if, if you ever saw me eat one little, one little bite turns into the whole thing. So I have to the <laughs> That's me. Well, it's an apple, so that's fruit. Right. right. Exactly. It's healthy. It's got an apple in it. The honey, the marshmallow, forget <laughs> that. <laughs> so, Mark, man, we could definitely talk to you all freaking day. Uh, it was an awesome that's interview. Uh, but thanks again for spending some time with us today. Like I said, I appreciate the, uh, the, the support that you have for the military and all the things that you've done and all the nuggets that you dropped from, from uh, you know, giving us, showing us some love to, to just talking about not ever giving up and talking about your failures. I think that's the most important thing to is understanding that, that no matter how successful you you know you are, that, that journey is is the real prize, right? All the failures and all that good stuff. No question. You you know, just everybody's you know everybody's got something they're good at. The hard part in life is finding what it is, and then when you're good at something, it's the challenge of becoming great at it. And once you can find, you can be really good at something or great at something, nobody quits what they're good at because it's fun. Yeah. It's fun to be good at something. And it doesn't matter what the job is, you know, in, in every single job, there's something that you can be great at. And, you know, I think you guys with what you do, it's so important. And, and I, I can't thank you guys enough for having me on. It was fun. You guys made it a lot of fun and, and um, thank you again for your service. Um, we'll, we'll never take it for granted. Absolutely. And we, and we appreciate you and your support. And like I said, thank, thank your, your family for their service as well. And um, if you if you don't mind, hold it on after the live. Uh, I, I got a, a gift for you that I, I sure. Want. I appreciate that. OK, but thanks, uh, everybody. But thanks, everybody. Chief chat out. Chief chat out. Thanks. <laughs>